Traders, how are you with Marcello, founder of the Day Trading Academy? Today we're doing the recap of what happened in the markets last week. We have uh, Tar Starlink getting into even more internet service providers. Warren Buffett is continuing to sell billions of dollars in shares. And now we have the best news of all, the Fed in the United States, the bank, the, the central bank in the United States, I just said it in Spanish, finally decided to lower rates. So now we have the economy moving again. Let's go ahead and get started. So the the Fed, which controls the in the, the monetary policy or the interest rates in the United States, decided to lower the interest rates by 50 bips or 0.50 percent, more than what was expected because what was expected was 0.25, and this is going to allow the economy to start moving quite a bit. The reason why this is such a big issue nowadays, why you know the the central bank chairman, which was never heard of before, is doing interviews and everything is because ever since 2008 and 2009, which some of you may not know would have happened, right? Because you may not be made too young to realize it. But we had a really bad financial crisis, the worst one since the Great Depression in the 1920s. And they lowered the interest rates to the lowest in recorded history. Now, to give you a little bit of backdrop, the reason why interest rates are so important is because the economy in the United States and in most of the industrialized world, which is the majority of the economy in the world, goes by consumer spending. The vast majority of it is consumer spending. In the United States, which has continued to be the largest economy in the world by far, almost 70% percent of the economy is consumer spending. So if they lower the rates, everything immediately becomes cheaper. Mortgage rates come down, you know, the, the real estate market construction, this whole market is about 17% of the economy, roughly, right? A little bit more, a little bit less. It's about, it's a rough estimate. Uh, your credit cards get a lot cheaper because the interest rates go down, right? You can start buying cars. Tesla this week, for example, went up by quite a bit. They had some other news in China, which I'll share here in a moment. So the interest rates are a huge number for the economy. In a country, for example, like Germany, their economy, which is the third largest in the world, is almost 50% consumer spending. Japan, fourth largest economy in the world, they're almost 50% as well. China, I don't know the number off the top of my head. I'll, I'll pull it up and I'll memorize it, but I assume it's about 30, 40%. So whenever the interest rates are lower, you can go out and afford more things, and that's what allows to get the economy going. Now, ever since we've had this huge increase in inflation, ever since the Biden administration took over in 2020, I believe it was 2020, you know, everything has gone up by quite a bit. So now a lot of consumers are also putting everything on their credit cards because they can't afford things anymore, basically, right? The essentials, things like that. So this is huge, huge news for the economy, especially because the expectation is that they're going to continue to lower rates going forward. The only stock market in the United States this week that was positive was the Dow, the S&P 500 and NASDAQ were both negative. The Communist Republic of Canada went up by 1.12%. And some of the conspiracy news, there's been reports coming out of various universities in accordance with the NASA and also the European Space Agency that they found a shocking new study that what's driving the climate is actually clouds and the sun, not necessarily CO2. Remember that CO2 carbon is about 0.04% of the atmosphere. Take that with a grain of salt. Overseas market news, European markets are mostly higher. Russia, if you consider it part of Europe, is the most positive of all. Latin America is mixed. The largest market in Latin America, Brazil, the Bovespa stock market went down by 2.91%. Middle East and Africa, those markets are higher. Looking here at the number, South Africa was the biggest winner there. And, Af uh, and Asia and the far, far east, Australia, that whole area, generally higher. Looking through the numbers here, it was the Nikkei and the Hang Seng, which were most positive of all there. Bitcoin and crypto news. Donald Trump, the presidential candidate for the Republicans, used Bitcoin for the first time in a video to buy hamburgers at a bar in New York. He called them crypto burgers. They were 
Huge, huge. Singapore's largest bank, DBS, has launched a Bitcoin and Ethereum options trading service. If you guys don't know, Singapore is one of the largest financial hubs in the world. Singapore isn't even the size of New York City, for example. They have zero natural resources. They're literally surrounded by sea, but they have two of the 10 largest sovereign wealth funds in the world, which are basically funds for the governments. They've done an amazing job. In a generation, they've gone from a fishing village to one of the highest GDP per capita, to one of the richest countries in the world. But if they're starting to offer the crypto trading, that means that everybody's going to probably going to fall in line very soon. Bitcoin for the week is higher, over 5%, and just notched above 63,000. Commodities and energy sugar futures are erupting higher as the unusual and persistent weather events in Brazil continue. A drought in Brazil is covering and affecting 59% of the entire country. There are actually rivers in the Amazon where you can't even travel via boat anymore. And if you guys don't know the transportation in the, the Amazon, there's basically one major city, which is Manaus. It's kind of in the middle on the Brazil side, but in the middle of the whole forest. And there's really no paved roads that go in and out of there. So most of the transport is done via boat. And so when there's no water and you can't transport things in and out, that's a big, big problem. Arabica beans, which is the coffee, hit its highest price since 2011. There's a, a drought and weather problems in places like Vietnam, which is mostly a Robusta uh, producer. They have a 40% uh, prices that went up 40% on the shortages of this coffee. Brazil is the largest exporter of coffee in the world. Vietnam is number two, then comes Colombia. So now that Vietnam is having shortages, what's happening is now there's a demand for more of the Arabica bean, which comes from Brazil and Colombia. Police and the FBI are now warning that armed Cuban and Venezuelan migrant gangs are coming after and committing violence in the Permian Basin, which is the largest place where the United States gets its oil from. It's its highest producing gas field. They're stealing oil, doing all these kinds of things. U.S. crude is up over 3%, $71 a barrel. Brent, which is the international crude, went up over 4% to almost 75 Gold on a tear now one of the things you have to understand with the dynamic when it comes to the interest rates is if the central bank in the united states lowers interest rates that means that the demand for the dollar is going to go down because it's not paying as high of an interest rate to investors right so the demand for the dollar goes down which means that the value of the dollar goes down People switch to other currencies that are paying higher interest rates, et cetera, et cetera. So if the value of the dollar goes down, that means that a lot of these currencies and even materials, raw materials that are priced in dollars, one of them being gold, silver, oil, copper, wheat, you know, corn, all of this stuff, most commodities, raw materials are listed in dollars. That has an inverse relationship because if the value of the dollar goes down, that means that these commodities are going to start going up. Gold for the week hit another record high, 2,626. It settled at about 2,578 and change. Excuse me, 2,622 and change. 1.71% for the week. Silver went up 1.26% to 3,124. And then the financial and banking news, the U.S. national debt now is almost at $36 trillion dollars. For this fiscal year, which ends this this coming month, they've already spent a trillion dollars just on interest on the debt, which is the second highest expenditure for the federal government, meaning that the second highest thing that they spent money on in the entire budget for the U.S. government was the interest on the debt. The problem now is that a lot of this debt that was got, that was purchase with one, two, three percent interest rates when they were at record lows has to be renewed. And now that it's being renewed, it's going to be three, four, five, six percent. So the payments are going to double or triple. So this is a big problem because we're not cutting down our debt. We're not lowering the amount of spending that we have. So the the increase in the amount of payments that we're going to make because we're having to renew the debt is going to skyrocket 
and eventually we're going to have a situation where we just can't pay our debts anymore. And that's why there's a lot of people getting into gold because people are starting to get nervous that the U.S. isn't going to pay its debts anymore. Fed cut its interest rates by 50 bips. I mentioned that already on Wednesday. The new Fed funds rate, which is the interest rate uh, dictated by the central bank, is between 4.75 to 5%. Warren Buffett has been continuing to sell hundreds of millions of shares in 2024. Since mid-July, he sold $8 billion in stock, sold half of his Apple stake. This week, uh, he sold another $836 million of Bank of America. It's about a billion dollars or so, just under a billion. So one of the things I always tell you is don't pay attention to what they say because they never get it right. Pay attention to what they do. And if the best investor in our history is literally dumping billions of dollars in stock, that means that the crash is coming and the recession is coming. Manufacturing in New York and economic news took a surprising term positive in September 1st. It's the first time since November that that happens, November 2024. The latest U.S. retail sales data indicated solid consumer health. It went up by 0.1% compared to the expectation, which was a decline. Miscellaneous items went up 1.7%. Online spending went up 1.4%. The GDP in New Zealand went down by 0.2% this quarter. And initial filings for unemployment insurance slumped last week. Weekly jobless claims gate came in at 219,000, which is the lowest since May. So there's some indicators that the central bank actually looks at, which are positive, meaning initial claims for unemployment are coming down. The, the consumer spending is continuing to go up. But as we know, a lot of companies, for example, even the dollar stores, I'm going to let you guys know about FedEx here in a moment, crash because of their, their expectation of what's going to happen in the future. Most companies are reporting that a lot of consumers, which is remember, 70% of the economy in the U.S. isn't doing well at all. In political news, there was a third assassination attempt on Trump during his time when he was golfing. Secret Service saw a man in the bushes, started shooting at him and got him under arrest. DHS, which is the Department of Homeland Security, confirmed that there are five active teams trying to assassinate Trump. Corporate news, BlackRock, excuse me, BlackRock and Microsoft are creating a $30 billion investment fund for AI. Apple fell almost 3% after they reported sluggish demand for their new iPhones. A popular analyst reported that there were, the sales were down 12% the first weekend when they launched the phones. JP Morgan and Bank of America also noted that there was light demand for the Pro. So it seems like even consumers, obviously the phones don't get that much better anymore, right? So consumers now aren't upgrading as often. Tesla went up 7% after the interest rate cuts from the Fed. In addition to that, they had very good numbers from China. Remember that China is the largest EV market in the world, electrical vehicle market. According to the registrations of new vehicles, it looks like they're going to have a record amount of sales in China. So that's a good thing for them. Their stock has been up 33% in the last three months, still negative for the year. And United Airlines is now going to offer free Starlink internet on all of its flights. Zillow went up by 5%. Now that Wedbush, which is a financial company, said that their, their stock should go up instead of being neutral. And they also have an expectation now that the mortgage markets and the real estate markets are going to move now that the interest rates are coming down. And FedEx went down 15% after they had a huge earnings drop. They also reported that consumers are now continuing to shift from cheaper, slower options compared to the higher cost, faster options. And remember that FedEx is always the bellwether of what the economy is going to do overall. International events, uh, obviously the war in Ukraine is still going on, the war in Israel and, and Lebanon and Gaza, that's still going on as well. I don't report on that as much because I figured, well, we kind of already know it's in the news, right? But there was, was something out of the ordinary this weekend that happened, or this week, I should say. The Mossad, which is the spy uh, department of the Israel government, blew up thousands of pagers they intercepted the pagers, the, the, the group from Lebanon, the Hezbollah, 
they switched from phones to pagers thinking that the Israeli government would be able to spy on them. And what the Israeli government did is that they intercepted the pagers. They put a small detonation device and set them all off over the last week, killing thousands of people and injuring thousands as well. Um, this, I think, has huge implications because imagine just who, who can intercept your cell phone you know, at any point. I mean, it's, it's, I, I think it's a little bit dangerous, actually. But Colombian government called off its peace negotiation with the leftist rebel group ELN. They, did, uh, they started the attacks again. They killed two soldiers and they injured dozens. And an interesting fact this week, Lucara Diamond Corp, which has mines in Botswana and Africa, it's kind of uh, in the bottom middle part of Africa, had a second major find in a month. One of the largest diamonds ever found, about one third the size of the largest ever found. It's going to be polished and the last one that they found sold for $13 million for all of the pieces that I gave in diamonds. So now this is probably going to give a lot of money as well. And according to FactSec, Oracle a billionaire chairman Larry Ellison saw his wealth go up to $206.5 billion, overtaking Jeff Bezos, now the second richest man in the world. Elon Musk is still number one. And that's the news for this week, guys. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe. And remember, the preppers are right.